There's a basket for Smaragda in the warehouse. She's waiting. What does it mean to be truly righteous? To never succumb to temptation, or to take a vow of chastity despite constant temptation? Our heroine did not know the answer to this question, and preferred never to dwell on it. If it were up to her, she would have chosen the quiet life of a nun. However, destiny had something different in store for her. I'm sorry. Maybe I can help. You're the last person I need right now. Get lost! Sorry. Look, it works. You know, you're not stupid at all. Why are you loitering here? <laughs> Did you get thrown out of the evening service again? Leave me alone. For the sake of the prayers of all the... Stesha, do you have something prepared for Smaragda? It's cold today, isn't it? Oh, potatoes. Thank you. Thank you. The sisters laughed, Indica. Christian love is known to be patient, merciful, and faithful. However, in a lowly human sense, they didn't love her that much. To be completely honest, they didn't love her at all. Many of them felt nothing but disgust for her. Indica, however, was not to blame. Were it not for the voice that was inculcating ideas in her, unforgivable for a Christian, she would have been a virtuous and rather mediocre nun. Indica's biggest dream was for that voice to leave her alone once and for all. 
Her entire life became a struggle, a painful resistance. No matter how hard she tried, no matter how much she tortured herself, the voice grew louder and more convincing every day. Sisters, today I was walking, Lord forgive me, through the refectory, and I saw the servant of God holding the life of passion bearer Hermann of Athos. So I went up to her, quickly made the sign of the cross, and I did. God grant you patience, Mother. For I worship Mount Athos, my sisters. The spirit of the Holy Church lives on, only on Mount Athos. some water. Useless labor is the basis of spiritual development. Obedience is above fasting or prayers. Indica didn't understand why she needed to retrieve the water from the well if there was a pump next door that took it from a sacred spring. She didn't understand why drinking from the spring was allowed, but cooking soup was a sin. The well was only about 15 meters away from the spring. It was not possible to have any other water there. Even a tenth of it is the same. They say on Epiphany, even a drop of holy water blesses an entire canister. If that were true, a couple of evaporated drops from the spring would bless the puddles beneath the
We haven't eaten even ten of them. With God's help, we'll make it to spring. No way. Sisters won't eat after her. Mother, the sign of the cross saves from the grave. But this... God forgive me. Glory to... Smaragda, don't tempt me. I'm sending Evdokia to you. Don't let this one into the refectory. As an outlaw shall I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May my communion of thy immaculate mysteries, O Lord, not be judged or condemned, but heal the body and soul. It is forbidden to leave the convent without a blessing. Despite her requests, Indica had not been blessed to leave for a full year. When she was tasked with delivering the letter, it took her completely by surprise. Even though she did not know the contents of that letter, she could not shake the feeling that it would play an extremely important, perhaps critical, role in her life. How would I know what's in it? What is in it? What's in it? What's in it?
For the sake of the prayers of all the saints, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Tisha, I need to go to the other side. Georgie, pirate, be quiet. The animals feel the unholiness. They're just happy to see me. Tisha, I'm sorry. The animals feel the unholiness. I brought you some apples. Or lovka, your favorite. Tisha, I must hurry to the train. fall again. Don't worry, Tikhon, I understand. Forgive me, for Christ's sake. Tikhon has the key. Oh, what an imbecile. Indica loved Tikhon. Imbecile was a medical diagnosis, so she was just using the word literally. In any case, Tikhon couldn't hear her. Hypocrisy isn't really a virtue, is it? It was as if the convent didn't want to let her go. Even though she knew there was no place closer to God, she yearned to leave it, at least for a short time. Not true! I think... One left from an unseen grace for who can tell of thy mighty work. This tasteless cabbage soup, the smell of rotting old women that even incense could not cover. Now I have come unto thee, my lord and god, a sinful and burden one, not having the boldness to look up into the heights of heaven because of the multitude of my transgressions. And now I cry to thee as the prodigal I have sinned. At lunch, she would carefully clean the devil's work from her dentures with her finger. Indica. Because of my boundless mercy and compassion, I dare to approach thee, O Christ. Receive me as thou didst the publican prodigal. Sister Martha's 
toothless jokes, hated the fuming candles, the rotting potatoes, the never-ending advice and lectures, the humility, the f- I've been running for long among thieves and was wounded, so have I also fallen through my sins and my soul is wounded. To whom shall I flee for heat? After entering the river, I have practiced. Entering the Jesus Christ, what, what, what are you doing here? You. The cloisters is here! Huh. What? what nun is you? fine. The conventual is here! The nun. Listen, you're, you're lucky to bump into me. I, I, I keep missing and I'm, I'm not good at this. Just, what? Go, 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 go. Get out of here. What? What? Who's there? to bump into him! He's... Not a great shot. Yes! Sorry, I can help if you let me. No, I don't think it can be helped. His nobleness has decided to listen to the visitation one last time. So let him listen. Don't interrupt. Excuse me, what, what happened here? Have you heard the joke about a crowbar and a train toilet? So, there was this train with a bunch of convicts. They put a spring between two carriages while the train was moving. They tried to plan an escape, I guess. How many died? Mostly fugitives. Many of them were shot. They had to care for the sick. Of course, we often have to. Then come with us to the station. All the wounded are there. The wounded are waiting at the station and then injects a corpse with morphine. Maybe out of respect for his dying wish or for the size of his epaulets. What do you think?
Since when do you obey me? Worry. Fear is a natural reaction, life-saving in most cases. What is your goal? To help the girl or show what a hero you are? Exactly. If you're trying to help, there's no chance. Calculating chances in a time like this. How low? <gasps> Listen to her. Doesn't like getting abandoned in the middle of an act. What? What? Did you see the size of that thing? Maybe you wanted to join them. <laughs> Not bad, I... <laughs> didn't have enough, you motherfucker. Someone too. Poor girl, a little more, and she could have. Lord have mercy on the cross. You didn't see. She got away. Well, well, I did. I didn't. I don't know how much, but if it weren't for me, God deliver us sinners from. Sorry. What, what is your name? Ilya. Indica. You know they say that every hour that a patient doesn't get medical attention, their chance of survival is halved. Crazy thing to say, to be honest. It makes no sense to generalize like that. Do we include every case, even a prick? No idea where to take it or where it came from. Sister! Did you arrive safely? No incidents? Cassio, is that you? Wait a second! <laughs> oh. You drop your, your weapon! Do it like this. Get on. Get on him. I'm telling you, go. Go. Get, get on.
Hey. Hey. Are you wounded? Why are you rushing so much? Sorry. We're doing no more than five bursts an hour, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you understand it, huh? Is he talking about the word burst or how to start an engine? I grew up in a bike shop. My father sold them. In Spasov. Why in Spasov? No, in Godadishi. I've never been to Spasov. That's where I grew up. 
<laughs> the man's logic is flawless. Uh, are you embarrassed to be so close to a man? She's been waiting for that. He's quite a looker, huh? Thick boy. Ah, I must smell awful. No, they, they kept us in the train for three days. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> she likes it. Oh! Pardon. Come on, come on. Grab her tips. Hey! Stop pretending. The men you imagine in your room when you all enough. All right, c calm down. But is he a bandit or a sissy? Hold on to your seat, for God's sake.
Are you all right? I'm sorry, can I take a look, please? There's nothing to look at. Better give me an injection. Oh my god. I'm afraid this will happen. If we don't amputate it, you won't survive the afternoon. Our prison doctor, he told me the same thing. Word for word. But that was over a week ago. And he didn't do anything? Sadly, the only surgical equipment he had was a, was a rusty wash basin. Very funny. All right. All right. Don't, don't worry. It should be like that. Only like that. I'm, I'm also talking to God. To God? Great. You need to get up if you don't want to lose something else to frostbite. What do you mean you talk to God? What? Oh, my arm. You've seen my arm, yes? It's been a week or more. I doubt it. And what does God have to do with this? Well, uh, let me explain. Ever since that night, everything, every event, it all happened as I was told it would. I I'm certain I was the only one who left that train alive. It's all going according to plan. Every fucking step is God's plan, do you understand? So taking me hostage was God's plan? I know what you're thinking. But remember the Gospel. The father who gave his money to the prodigal son, not to the beloved one. The good one, but to the bandit. He who had been murdering and stealing, but came back. He came back. Do you understand? I think the Lord is happier to see to see one repentant sinner than well, a hundred thousand righteous people. I don't know. I, they don't even need repentance. Do, do, do you hear me? You know, he, he laid everything out before me. Spread out like a deck of cards. The past, the present, the future. Who? God, who else? I was lying there, about to die. And a sister, just like you, bought me some water in this mug. And I was drinking and I saw... I saw ripples in the water, little round waves, and heard a whisper, so I drank, and... You heard God in a cup? In a cup, yes. But that's, that's not the point. I'll show you when we get there. Maybe we should go around. A nun and an officer? Who cares? But the telegraph poles. The cables are ripped out, though. And the road. Doesn't look like it's been used lately. is rusted shut. I have to find something to get rid of the screw. It won't fucking budge.
Maybe there's something in that shed. I've missed this smell. So? Found a wrench. Give it to me. Lord have mercy. What's that? Just a dog. Calm down. I hate them. Hurry up. Quiet, quiet little doggy. We won't hurt you. Are you crazy? Run! you up with my bare hands if I wanted. Well, hand. Why? I mean, why the fuck did you throw away the revolver? Well, would have been useful. I mean, go. Oh, I would. I would never. Well, oh, shit. Tell me something. If you're God's chosen one, why didn't God heal you completely right away? That's a good question. Here's your answer. Here. Here. Can understand. So God had enough power only to stop the rotting, but to heal you completely, he needed some kind of tool. It's not. It's, it's not about the tool. A man can't be saved against his will. You see, basically, look, yeah, it has nothing to do with my arm. 
It's about the path. The path we've been given. And whether to follow it or not, it's up to us. And what do I have to do with it? So, possessed people are taken to the Kudyats? Everybody is. Do I look possessed to you? No, n not you. All right, let's get out of here. Hoist me up. Me hoist you up? Yes, you. You won't be able to pull me up from up there. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Ilya? God. Are you alive? <sighs> Ilya? Yeah. Of course it wasn't a coincidence. And now Indica realized it too. She had heard about the Kudyats and its miracles. But right now, in Spasov and Ilya. Meeting a prisoner who talks to God would not be an everyday occurrence. Also, Indica took a liking to him. Who, this one? <laughs> no. One way or another, there was certainly no doubt that she had to head for Spasov and not the Danilov Monastery. <gasps> the letter! I cannot neglect my duty. What if there's something important in it? Open it. See for yourself. No! Reading someone else's letter is a greater sin than not delivering it. Greater? How much greater? Twice as much. I don't know. Interesting. So, not delivering two letters is the same as reading one. What about stealing, pocketing a ruble, for example? Is that worse? Worse. How much worse? This is nonsense. You can't compare such things. Why not? The priest imposes a different penance for different sins. And since you know for sure which is better or worse, there has to be a way of measuring. Then let us say that stealing is ten times worse than not delivering a letter. What about murder? Let us put that at a thousand. That would mean that if a postman were to lose a sack full of letters, we'd have a murderer. Although, maybe there should be a bulk discount. <laughs> what about a rapist? A rapist is better than a murderer, right? You are not scared of the sin. You are scared of the letter. Perhaps you should not open it. Do not do it. The abbess knows you inside out, so everything turned out just as written. <laughs> Defrocked her? How did that happen? <laughs> Even if the Kia wasn't up. Because if I found this mercy and compassion, I dared to approach the O Christ. You got pushed out of your house and then out of the monastery. <laughs> And if, by chance, you were to kill someone and go to jail sooner... I saw this wasted with evil in this barren of good deeds, but I beseech thee, O Lord, pour out upon me a drop of thy mercy and cleanse me, for I am defiled by many sins and... And it will get returned. Sorry, she's not here anymore. Oh, defrocks. <laughs> so where now? Huh? Huh? So... And now I cry to thee as the protocol I have sent before thee, O merciful Father. Receive me a penitent and make me... Where's the dog? Good question. I haven't heard it for a while. Listen, 
I'll help you get to Spasov. Somehow, Indica was convinced that the Kudets was going to solve all of her problems. That soon the voice in her head would disappear, and she would return to the monastery as someone who deserves at least forgiveness, if not everyone's love. She thought that years of suffering had been leading her up to this exact moment. I figured out what this place is. This is Denisovka, the paint factory. Marfa told me about it. She, she's our iconographer. They make yellow paint in that shed. Where is everyone? There was an explosion. They say everyone was evacuated in one day. Work with me. Wrong uh, way. I won't make it. Hold on. We'll think of something. Exactly what we need. What's that? <laughs> Dumb bitch. Why are you standing around? How long can dogs stay underwater, huh? I don't know. I'd wait for a couple of hours, just to be sure. The stairs are broken. We'll have to go through the mill. Beautiful. We had this one artist in the clink. He drew his family on the wall with his own shit. They look so lifelike. What? He was like that. Didn't manage to finish the drawing of the daughter, though. Le left her with just one eye. He got stabbed. Because of the stench? No. He, he was drawing on the wall outside. It was minus 30 degrees. Shit doesn't really stink when it's cold. He got stabbed because, well, it's against the code. So where do we go now? The elevator. Here's the gearing. Planetary gear set. By, by blocking one of the wheels, you can change the direction of the shaft rotation. I see. I guess we, we should look for an intact cotter. I see. It doesn't fucking work. Nothing works here right now. to hold up. It's a cotter, a safeguard. It breaks when there's an overload to protect the important parts of the engine. I see. It works. Go 
Slow down! I can't go down. Something's in the way. Go up! Go up! Down! Going down. Going up! Go down! Going down! Oh shit! That's our exit! So you're, so you're suggesting walking that plank? Are you afraid of heights? No, no. <laughs> Told you, we, we should have gone around. Ever been to the circus? Yeah, yeah. I could say, God rest your soul. We'll all be there at some point.
sinful. There are no sinners among dogs. Only humans can sin. Tempted by the devil. And that dog, its humans left, stopped feeding it. So it became a matter of survival. Interesting. So what's the difference between a human and a dog? The thing you're blaming the devil for is as likely to happen to a human as it is to a dog. It gets angry when its food is taken away. It's ready to tear anyone apart if its possessions are threatened. A dog gets sad if its beloved human is not around. It gets jealous, anxious, even sodomy as possible. Remember that one time when Georgie... That's different. I needed to survive. To find a most promising partner, give birth to offspring. And a human? You have such a simple explanation for a dog. But how come humans can never do without divine or devilish intervention? Finally, the station. Does a, does a dog have a soul? Dogs adore their masters. Is that even possible without a soul? Does one need a soul to feel love? Is it possible to love without a body? What remains if you deprive a dog of a body? How can it love something it can't hear or sniff? How can it remember someone it loves if it loses its brain with its memories? In a world without bones, cold, procreation, beautiful women, rich men, bodies, basically, passion, kindness, love. Can any of it exist without the body? For a dog. What? Uh, yes, F for a dog. I'll put that there. Maybe the crane could move it. If this thing still works, it's a miracle. When's the next train? What if it's tomorrow? The station must have the schedule. What's the point? I, I don't think it's gonna stop here. So what do we do? Have you read Mark Twain? Tom Sawyer? Yes. So... I like it. Me too.
ideas are so strange for a nun. Those aren't my ideas. I mean, I didn't choose the monastery life. Were you sent there against your will or something? Not against my will. I mean, when you're 15, the monastery isn't really a dream destination. There was no other way. Sometimes there are circumstances. You have a choice with a monastery. Or... Circumstances? You, you were 15. But now you're like an angel of God, even though you're black all over. I, 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 Maybe I mean, your clothes, your clothes are black. Fallen as far as not, I not anything else? Fallen? How? Yellow, yellow ticket or something? What? I've only known one. Be married? No, never. Why am I even explaining myself to you?
going? This is the Spice of Fish Factory. I think nobody's there now. That's good. And the line to the city's always open. How do you know all this? You work there? Not a chance. Reminds me of my mother. She could never wash it off, no, no matter how she tried. I even loved that smell. And she was shy about it. Whenever she had to go to the store or was summoned to my school, she she used some unbearable perfume. It would tickle my fucking nose whenever she hugged me. Where is she now? I, I, I don't know. Not again. Yeah, nice. 
it feels to take my wimple off. My head's so itchy all the time. We're not even allowed to sleep without it. It's not like anything, anyone will see you. If you take it off. The Dean walks around all night checking on us. Really? It's just like the screws in the clink. Mardine is more like a warden. She also manages the coin and assigns our bunks. And... Smell from your arm is unbearable. We have to go. So the monastery wasn't your choice? It was. But when your decision has a reason, is it really a choice? When a brook hits a rock, does it choose which way to go? Oh, fuck me. You're, you're, you're not a brook. You, you have your own free will. Free will. Choices. But whenever we make a choice, don't we base it on our previous experience? Don't we estimate all the possible benefits in our head? And if we go against the rational, don't we realize that we're being driven by our emotions, by our passions? Do you understand? As I was saying, our will helps us to control our passions. Resist temptation. That's true. But when you control your emotions, there's always a reason, right? You can explain why you're doing it, build a string of logic. If the soul didn't exist, all that remains would be your logical shit. How the fuck can one live without a soul? Humans haven't learned that yet. Uh, ask him if he knows what a soul even is. Everyone says so this, so that, but can anyone clearly explain what it is? Yes, but even a soul has its own inclinations. But let's say your soul gravitates towards God, and mine doesn't. Is that my choice then? Or, in theory, let, let's imagine that the choice isn't based on anything. What kind of choice is it then? Pure chance. Wait, so... So you're saying choice is an empty word? Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't even understand the point of this whole choice thing, this freedom that God has graced us with. Why would God need our so-called freedom if in the end he's only satisfied with strictly defined choices? He could have just made me in a way he would have liked me. No. I 
do once I play the bats. Where? Nothing but. He owns a tavern. You played in front of people. Got a standing ovation. Can you play something? How can I? they? I don't know. Never seen those before. Here's what I think. Oh, shit. Here we go again. I'm not telling you anything from now on. Oh, come on. I, I'm joking. Tell me. You, you were wondering about freedom. Why did God make you free? Here's what I think. If I were the Tsar, I wouldn't want my wife to be a slave. I would find myself a free girl that can love me genuinely. Do you understand? Yes. It's a good example. But now imagine if your Tsar has found himself a girl he loves. Can you? So? So he confesses his feelings to her and invites her to his palace. So? And now imagine that the Tsar also says, if you come, I'll drape you in gold. And if you don't, I'll hang you on a hook and burn you slowly. This also requires her to return his feelings. I see where you're going with this. But it's not God who burns people in hell. That would be those damn demons, enemies of mankind. Very well. In this case, the Tsar says, if you come, I'll cover you in gold. And if you don't, Parf and the Butcher will catch you, hang you on a hook and burn you slowly. I love you endlessly, but can't do anything about it. Think about it. If even the Tsar can't actually do anything about this Butcher because of some unclear circumstances, why can't he just stay silent? So you're saying nobody can love God genuinely? No. No, it's not like that. I...
We have to check one place before the line. Where? You'll see. I've hidden something there. All right. Where are we going exactly? We have to go over there. We can climb on those cans! It's not that complicated. Do we really need it? You'll see. Are we even allowed here? There's nobody here. Everyone's asleep. The one on the right is ours. It's called a stroboscope effect, like looking through a bike wheel. Yeah, I'll, uh... <clears throat> well, I mean, it's pretty. Just for this. I'll show you. Sit down. This, this puddle, 
She's a singer. Why paddle? Because this is Seva. He's a guitarist.
Lie down, oh. lie down. Oh, oh. Everything's going to be all right. Otherwise, you won't. But lie down. Shh. 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 It's against God's plan. You went against God. Against God, not in the slightest. This is not that bad. Please be, be still. Be quiet, please. Please. Not that bad, huh? Will it go back? Why not? It's not like it's harder for God to work one miracle than... A miracle? You didn't... You didn't believe in it. From the start, you were angry that a miracle could happen to me. No. To, to a person like me. No. I'm so, so dumb and jealous. Give me an injection. None left. Oh, this, this time, this, this wasn't just empty talk. I know. All this f philosophy. Oh, Joyce, God, God doesn't talk to me since I met you. No, leave me. For the first time since meeting Ilya, Indica felt a stab of doubt. What if she'd made a mistake? What if she had done something wrong? What if the Kudyats wouldn't work? Why was every step on her road to God drawing her closer to the devil? I did everything correctly. Otherwise he would have died from sepsis. And if he didn't? There! He's healed! A miracle! Wouldn't feel good, would it? That means he was indeed talking to God and earned his absolution. God, please, talk to me this one time. How did I go against you? Is it in my power to intervene in your design? Is this a part of your plan? Is this how it's supposed to be? It will be all right. The arm will heal. Ilya will live. He'll live. So now I have to feel guilt for this as well? You can see I'm trying. But he's always behind my shoulder. Me again. You were driven by fear. The fear of ending up with a corpse. And back then, with the gypsy. What was it? Were you restless because of his tanned arms?
one from the poster was towering over Indica. She was consumed by anxiety more and more. What if she was late? What if they realized who she was and wouldn't let her in? What if she was not worthy of a miracle? Maybe one needed to buy a ticket to see the miracle, and all the tickets had sold out. What if her certainty in God's plan was just another delusion, a temptation she so faint-heartedly succumbed to? You don't like it? That the prioress cut it as punishment? It wasn't a big deal. I burned Father Sergei's Falonian.
What an undignified... Look, that's our cathedral from the poster.
piazzas. What? The tavern you were talking about. There it is, below. Yeah. By the way, see the pawn shop opposite the tavern? Its owner is Nam Pats, Ephraim's brother. They've always hated each other, and yet depended on each other. Nam was buying stolen stuff from the vagrants, who would then go to Ephraim to spend the money on shitty wine and whores. And Ephraim spoons would often end up in Nam's shop. We used to call them the Batshit Brothers. Why don't they like each other? Because each of them thinks that the other brother is richer. Soon you'll be able to play a concert there again. I want to see it, yes? Shit, it's not finished. Down! Up! Get me down! Down! the good yet? It's over. Been too long already. Last day the 23rd. Today, the cadets will be taken further. You'll be able to find it in the Lipsy. 
Yeah, it's that's still where. Here. Please, if you only knew what we've been through. People showed up from other countries. Everyone who wanted to was already venerated. It. Listen, if you don't let me see the miracle, I'm dead. Literally dead. And he... I can be honest with you, right? Can I confess to you? Oh, sure. He escaped from prison to commune with well, America. What do you mean? If only you knew what, what he's been through. Oh, fine. Wait here. Wait here. Priest will never break the seal of confession. He's had worse, trust me. He's had worse. This way, over oh, oh, here. What did he tell you? There huh? he is. There he hey, is. No, no, we, we were just joking around. He has a knife. Don't come closer. No, he only has one arm. No way, he's got a knife. Just like a... He'll stab me. Step aside. Oh, oh my god! Shoot him! Shoot him! Freedom, my dear! Hey, it's here! What? The jets. Hold it, hold it. Like that, hold it. Come on, hold it. Come out with your hands up. Don't you dare. I'm gonna count to three. Grow back. It's not about that. You see, if the Lord allows. Enough. Let it go.
me, place me on his right hand, unworthy as I am when he sits to judge the living and dead. Ever heard of Makar, the Scytheman? There was a lot about him in the papers, but only after he was hanged. Seven kids lost their heads because of his scythe. What? Well, he chopped them off. Are you comparing him to me? Well, no. No, I think Makar is something of a saint. Listen, let me tell you. Makar had three kids, all of them boys. One day, he dropped something on his youngest, a, a wagon or a wardrobe or something. It was so bad that the poor boy stopped feeling his legs. Couldn't sleep at night. Lay there all day crying from pain. The village doctor couldn't do anything, so well, Makar couldn't take it anymore. He went to the priest and said, Bless me, Father, to end the child's suffering. Oh, well, the priest didn't bless him, of course. He sent him home to pray and think about the salvation of his soul. Makar prayed for a week but the sun wouldn't stop screaming. So, Makar snapped, took the cover off his side, said a prayer, and ended the suffering with a single swing. He went back to the priest and said, It's done, Father. I don't have a soul anymore. And I lost my right to think about salvation back when I dropped that wardrobe on my son. Or was it a wagon? I don't remember. So, my soul is done. Better tell me where he is now, in hell or in heaven. The priest said, in heaven, of course. He didn't get to sin. In a way, you gave him a gift. Sent him straight to the kingdom of heaven without any earthly suffering. Well, this thought got stuck in my car's head. So he went home, put his other sons in front of a kiosk said a prayer with them, and chopped their heads off. But after that, he went completely insane and started hunting down his neighbor's kids. He managed to kill four of them before he got caught. Why is he a saint? Think of it this way. Some martyr gets burned at the stake because of Christ. Does it mean he buys himself eternal life for ten minutes of suffering? Hmm? Can we call this a real sacrifice? Makar is a different story. To save someone else's soul, he sacrificed his own. Why are you telling me all this? Father Prok, the one you killed. He couldn't have asked for a better gift. He's now an innocent victim, a martyr. Maybe he'll even be canonized. And what about my car? What about him? He got hanged. <laughs> and what will happen to you? Well, you'll get hanged, I guess. Listen, what's your name? It doesn't matter. Need something? Doesn't matter indeed. Listen, we didn't kill Father Buckle. Let me go. Don't take your conscience with sin. I'll repay you. And what exactly can you repay me with? Well, what do you want? Anthem. I don't know their anthem. Well, 
to see something you know. Quiet forest lullaby All the stars are in the sky If I can share the grass I guess I can't do anything worse than that. It's so easy to step over everything you believe in. Step where? Somewhere. Onto your side. What kind of side is that? Are you going to argue again? That there are no sides? That there's neither good nor evil? You can try. Convince me that I haven't done anything bad. Or can you not even do that now? Bad? What does that word mean? I've killed a priest. Don't play dumb. I'm not. But still, what exactly does that word mean? Bad. Sinful. Of the devil. And how do you know what is of the devil and what is not? There are commandments. So we're checking against a formal list of regulations? No, everything is really obvious. It's evil, dishonest, unfair. Evil? There's not a drop of evil in despondency, avarice, or bawdry. Dishonest? A dog is honest. It eats when it's hungry, bites when it's scared, copulates when there's someone to do it with. Well, you remember. I'm talking about intentional dishonesty for one's own gain. So, pretending your whole life that you don't want something you want, that you don't feel something you feel for eternal life in heaven, doesn't that fit perfectly with your definition? What else did you say? Unfair? Is it fair that one tree has a thousand leaves and another two thousand? Is it fair when two people throw the dice, one gets a six and the other gets a two? Of course, all this is rational, but we don't like this rationality. We angrily call it unfair. But if you forget your emotions, it turns out, strictly speaking, this word can't be applied to anything. What about what's happening now? What can be more revolting, disgusting, vile? I don't need any deliberations, I know it, I feel it. When you're cold, you don't need to think about it, you just feel it. You know that you're cold. Do you understand that there is no cold without warmth? You can't get rid of poverty and suffering, leaving only wealth and happiness. Leave me alone. Oh, I'd love to. But I will only disappear when you stop wanting me to. It's not that hard. Just remember that good and evil, warm and cold, those are just lines on a thermometer. God and the devil, those are you. One cannot exist without the other. this, let's say, complete exposure. No, you can't. I tell you what, fear not earthly justice but that of heaven. When the soul is separated from the body... <laughs> stop right there, you bitch! Oh, stop! My hand! My hand! Ah! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> 
Stop! Stop right there, you bitch! the cadet. One second. Oh, oh. Did I undo my trousers? Where is the cadet? Well, um... <laughs> they didn't even give me five rubles for it. What? Give me the money. I don't have any. It's gone. You know, I've already conquered the guitar, but the, the brass... Where is the cadet? Mm, never heard of it. Someone just exchanged it for a trumpet. A, a man with one arm? Oh, you are extremely lucky. This is exactly what you're looking for. An amazing artifact of unspeakable wondrous power. Just 25 rubles. What do you mean, 25? You got it for five. Mm. 20 for everything. Whoa, One whoa, second, whoa, whoa. I just need to have a look. You can look, but, but don't touch. What? What did you sell me, you scumbag? Oh, damn. Um, hold on. Look, it, it doesn't even fucking you work. Just puking it or something. Good. Get your ass out of here. Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. 